It's human nature. As we advance in years and see how shittily our lives have turned out, we can't help but wonder, what choice did I make that led me down this dirty, dusty, cactus-strewn road rather than a nice road? <laughs> For some of us, Monica Lewinsky, O.J. Simpson, the answers are obvious. For the rest, not so much. I've given this a lot of thought as it pertains to my own dismal path. And the wrong turn I keep coming back to is the one where I chose not to show my penis to a certain producer, director, and straight-to-video star -like. Yes, I know, indecent exposure is so rarely the white career mode. But this is Hollywood we're talking about. A business run by adults for the entertainment of children. Do the movies have to get stupider because our children are getting stupider? Or do our children follow the movies downhill? I don't care. I just wish I were still getting paid to write them. I broke into the business partly on my own stupidity and partly thanks to the generous stupidity of others. I had written a script in which the villain was the protagonist, the viewpoint character, rather than the antagonist. Since the villain was a woman, mostly I figured this would let the audience watch her shower. I'd seen enough movies. I'd seen enough movies to know this was a great a protagonist villain? The studios thought I must be an idiot, which is much worse than stupid, and thus a bad thing. But the script got passed along to an exec with a small company that specialized in bad movies. <laughs> the exec actually thought the script was good, while knowing that her boss was an idiot. She concocted a plan to make him think my good script very bad, and thus perfect for his company. <laughs> the idiot was convinced. He even managed to convince HBO, which, if you'll remember, back in 1991, was very interested in bad movies with women showering. <laughs> the HBO deal meant that the company, with stingy hiring of mediocre talent, could now lock in a profit. They hired a down on his left director and a straight to video star who enjoyed all states of undress. But get this the producer, the director, the cast, they were all in on the joke. They were going to try to make a good movie at the bad company's expense. You see, good movies help the careers of all involved. They make you an artiste and Hollywood relishes nothing more than actually overpaying our teeth than forcing them to make crap. I knew nothing of all this. I was just the screenwriter first time from Tucson. At one point, the director flew me in for a day and kept me two weeks to do the endless reproduction rewrites the director so loved to demand. My spouse at the time concluded that I must be sleeping with the straight-to-video starlet. My wife didn't yet know Hollywood's oldest and truest joke, the one about the blonde actress, so dumb that she slept with the screenwriter. <laughs> Our starlet wasn't blonde, but she did have a reputation for promiscuity in Hollywood, which is saying something. <laughs> she rolled a web of sexuality about the set. The director became unassertive around her, and the producer little more than a babbling idiot. And she had her less than leading man on, a, on the same kind of psychosexual merry-go-round that his character was supposed to be on in the movie. Now, I was actually less intimidated by the star look than more the others, because I already knew there were no conditions under which she would ever sleep with me. That's the power of the dumb starlight joke. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe was actually considered a smart one until she married out the villain. But I digress. <laughs> the moment where I chose the wrong path 
came during rehearsal, specifically the scene in which the villain goes to the detective who's tracked her down into showing her his penis. It takes place in a moving car. Some context. The director had already made me rewrite this damn scene no less than 15 times. He didn't buy that the detective would show his privates, and yet the scene hinged on him doing just that. So there we were, the producer, the director, the star, and I. The actor playing the detective was taking a cocaine break. <laughs> the director asked that I play this part. Though I never acted in my life, or really even shown emotion, <laughs> I took a seat next to the starlet. We ran the lines. I pretended to show my privates. The director said it wasn't working. He told us to try it again, instructing the starlet this time to physicalize it. The next thing I knew, she was elbow deep in my crotch, apparently attempting to remove my penis for me. <laughs> I stood abruptly. Acting lessons that I hadn't taken hadn't prepared me for this. <laughs> well, given time, I may have come to appreciate that it was just the character the actress was playing who was attempting to grab hold of the character my penis was playing. <laughs> my mind had to make time to make the leap. Also, I was sure it was a leap my wife's mind would never make. <laughs> See, jabbed the director, it doesn't work. I assured him it did work. The only thing that didn't was me as the actor. Why wouldn't he, I said. She's asking to see it. He's thinking it might get him laid. He doesn't know that she's just trying to get him to unbuckle. Welcome to Hollywood. We're having a screen match about penises. <laughs> You've got to rewrite it. You throw out everything I write. It still comes down to him yanking his dick out. OK, you do it. Do what? You yank your dick out. If you do it, I'll believe it. I won't have to rewrite the scene. Well, shoot it, it's written. I didn't even hesitate. I unsnapped and unzipped, reached down, and prepared to open the curtain on my character. <laughs> then I made the mistake that will haunt me the rest of my life. I looked up. The starlet was loving it. The producer and director, however, their mouths gaped in horror and disbelief at what I was about to do. I lost my nerve. I was new to the business. Their prissy faces convinced me I was making a career ending error. <laughs> Sheepishly, I pulled my hand out of my pants and asked the director when he needed to rewrite by. Of course, he hated it and shot the scene as originally written. <laughs> it became the most cited scene in a movie that went on to become something of a cult hit. Now, it's not that not showing the penis somehow ruined things for me. For a while there, I had a decent career. I got to hunt Glenn Close. I got to play Samuel Jackson's part in a table read opposite a supermodel. I got to take rapid fire dictation while Quentin Tarantino raced around a room shooting an imaginary gun and shouting out lines that consisted mainly of the word motherfucker. <laughs> I don't doubt that word of my indecent exposure would have gotten out. That's how it is in Hollywood. The variety headline would have read, Scribe shows schlong and script showdown. <laughs> in no time, all the top talent would have been lining up to work with me. Because this is Hollywood, for Christ's sake. If no one's thinking about your genitals or your sex lives, then really, who are you? <laughs> if I'd shown the penis, I could have been that rare screenwriter who stands apart from the herd who goes to the party.
parties and isn't mistaken for the help. He goes on to direct and get laid. When the money became excessive, I might have even moved on to Broadway. And by Broadway, I don't mean the Kimberly Woods apartments between Wilmot and Cole. <laughs> behind Walgreens, <laughs> where I'm currently 